Hey, uh, I'm going to go quickly through the Fusion 360 demo on how to make the uh, the base plate for the stamp that's done in, uh, in Kevin's video that I forwarded along. Um, I will try to mention a few of the hiccups that I found as I was going through it and uh, ask a few questions as well. So let's go here. Um, first, we pick a side that we're going to make our shape on. I think Kevin picked the right. Uh, I'm going to hit L for line. Left click once and let go. Oh, no, I clicked that plane. Now I'm clicking the line. Left click once, let go. Type 35 for distance and enter. I'm going to scroll wheel in. I'm going to move my dimension marker down. Uh, I'm going to click, I uh, hit L again for line, click. Now, in his demo, it measures the angle from the other side of this line. So we want this to be 70 degrees um, on the acute side here, or the, the side closer to the plate. Um, I couldn't get it to switch, so I'm just going to subtract 110 from, I'm going to set the length at 5, and then subtract 70 from 180 to get 110, so that makes the same angle. I'm going to hit L again, click there. Now here this is doing what it did in Kevin's video. Um, if anybody knows how to switch where that angle is being measured from, I'd be grateful. Uh, and enter, and now L again. Click and click. We've closed this image. I'm going to escape to get off L. I'm going to move the dimension marker. And <clears throat> Now I believe he extruded this, so we click on this, hit E, I'm going to hit 90 for the distance, and say OK. It looks like nothing happened, but if we um, hold down Shift and then the mouse scroll wheel that does orbit, I could also grab the orbit button here, or I could grab this orientation cube, move it around. So we see that that shape did extrude through. Now, um, I believe... Uh, he then inserted an SVG. Now I'm going to click on the, well, there's an interesting point here. Um, in order to change the orientation, you know, I can, I can move the orientation cube around. There were some arrows that Kevin had mentioned that would allow me to rotate this around this plane. Um, I couldn't see those arrows, so I had to Google <laughs> where they went. If you are in exactly one of these uh, orientations, top, right, back, front, then these arrows appear. So I can click that around, spin it around. A uh, little tip I had to Google. So now I'm going to go to insert SVG and um, in the video that Kevin had, you could either go to his website and download uh, an image that he had, an SVG, or we can do something like use a free vector editor like Inkscape to create some text, and I'm going to create uh, 16 tech makerspace text. I'm going to hold shift and left arrow to highlight it all. I'm going to choose an exotic font just because I like to be uh, design heavy. And we'll go to Algerian. And then um, originally, when I had just saved this as an SVG, there was nothing in that file. And I realized that in Inkscape, you need to click the object, go to path click Object to Path, and then save as your SVG. Go to Demo, go to Live Demo, call this Inkscape. Uh, Inkscape is a free and open source vector editing and creation software package, so I recommend it highly. Uh, we could also do the same thing in Adobe Illustrator. Um, and if I say Insert SVG, I now browse. Oh, let's choose this this plane, insert SVG, browse to live demo folder, Inkscape Algerian, say OK. Um, I'm going to move it here. I'm going to use this little scaling button here to make it larger. Notice that the scale plane XY factor is going up. Uh, if I knew exactly what number uh, to scale it by, I could punch it in there. Then I'm going to grab this, move it down. That looks about OK. I'm going to flip it horizontally. Because this is a stamp, it will stamp the mirror image. I'm going to say OK. Um, 
And now I'm going to go back, rotate that around, um, depress the scroll wheel on the mouse to pan. So now I see it says 16 tech makerspace in Algerian font <laughs> backwards. Um, now I want to extrude this. If I look at this, it's just on the plane. Um, I hit E for extrude. Now I have to select each of these little objects. And so I'm going to choose this guy and left click. You don't have to hold shift down. It automatically adds them all. Now notice this is a, a hiccup of real life. Because I picked a complicated font, these letters are not just a single vector. Um, sometimes they are, but even the M, which looks like one big enclosed image. Nope, it has another one here too. These are complicated. These may not be rendered or reproduced in, in a, with a decent 3D printer. Um, so I'm just highlighting the main, uh, the main shape of each letter. So this is a lesson to me. Don't be too complicated. Uh, this Algerian font has so much detail to it that it might be hard to 3D print. And so again, I'm depressing the mouse scroll wheel to pan and click and click. Sometimes uh, if you click incorrectly, you might accidentally get the edge. You might also highlight the back plane. So I'm being very cautious to just click these letters. And if I had accidentally clicked the, lap, the back plane, I don't know how to unselect it or deselect it. So I would have to uh, exit out and redo all of these again. Um, we'll talk about an easier way to do this uh, in a second. But I call this uh, <laughs> digital manual labor um, or manual digital labor when you have to spend time doing something that should feel automatic on a computer, but you have to do it uh, individually for each little character in this example. Even if it takes a minute or two, in the scheme of things, it's not a lot of time. So just grin and bear it. So now we've highlighted them all. I'm going to hit that uh, two millimeter extrusion distance. Say OK. And there we have uh, that font extruded. Now we could just use the font or the text feature in Fusion 360. So I'm going to hit uh, control Z, undo, control Z, undo, and I'm going to use text. I don't really know where it is, so I'm going to hit S for search. I'm going to type text. I'm going to click the text. It gives me a selection. I'm going to type in 16 tech makerspace, and I'm going to choose that same Algerian font just to show that I can. I bet it takes the fonts in my Windows directory on my computer. And I can flip horizontal again. And, oh, I should have scaled it before I did that. Um, let's see there. There we go. Um, actually, I'm not sure how to, how to scale this shape. Like I said, I'm not great at Fusion 360. So what I'm going to do is uh, Control Z again, S for search, text, boom. I bet you oh, I would have thought it would let you define how big that is, but um, let's see. If we say seven, oops. <clears throat> I'm gonna make the height seven. Let's see what this does. And sixteen tech makerspace and Algerian and flip. <clears throat> okay, so that seems to have made it a little smaller. Now, because this is a Fusion 360 object, I can hit E and this is selected and I can say two millimeters 
and extrude it. And I didn't have to go through the trouble of highlighting every character there. So if it's just simple text you're doing, um, you can do it in Fusion 360. Now, if I wanted to do something more complicated like <clears throat> a logo or an image, and I'll show a video about how to do that uh, later, let's see, I can include, I'm hitting Control Z, just undo. I'm choosing this face. I'm saying insert, insert vector, browse to, let's look at, <clears throat> I think this might be the 16. Oh, okay, good. 16 tech logo, and I'm going to shrink that down, and I'm going to move it across, shrink it down a little further. I'm going to hit horizontal flip again because the stamp makes the reverse image. Hit OK. Now I'm going to hit E for extrude, and I'm going to choose the features of the logo, and I'm going to say extrude 2. I could also grab this arrow and pull it up and down. And that is the 16 tech logo on the plate that would be for the stamp. Now I'm going to try one more thing. Control Z, Control Z, choose this plane, insert SVG, and browse to this composite image I had made of myself. I'm going to scale this down. I'm going to move it over. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say Extrude. And I'm going to choose, this is upside down, I know, so let's rotate it. I'm going to choose the elements of this piece. I think I got them. Oh, there's a third one there and extrude it to and say OK. And now we have a stamp that was created from a photo of myself. And if I can find that. I had taken this photo and I turned it to grayscale and thresholded it in Photoshop. And then I made a composite in Photoshop. I took this image and I exported it to Online Image Convert and downloaded the SVG. So I hope you can see that you can create pretty arbitrarily complicated geometries pretty quickly without having to have a lot of talent in CAD. Uh, you just have to know a few tricks. And uh, that's what we're here to share. So lots of fun.